What is going on guys? Wiser here and I'm coming to you with a special video from One Hive Labs. I am here with one of the creators and founder of the EWA, the Elite War Alliance. Uh, his name is Tybo. How you doing my friend? Uh, it's going pretty well, Wiser. How about you? Uh, it's going great actually. You know, the world of Clash is kind of booming right now. It was uh, looked pretty grim a little while back. I don't know if you remember, you know, it was maybe... Kind of right when Town Hall 11 sort of came out at the same time as Clash Royale. And then mm -hmm. I think everyone was kind of down. But now with the friendly challenges, this latest update, all the things going on, um, it's really exciting again. And uh, a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, you know, we got Chicago Live coming up. I know a huge group of the 2.0 guys are going. We're geared up and pumped for that. So, in fact, I am in the preliminary war, which I'm going to flip over to real quick and just show some replays while we chat here. Um so I just want to talk a little bit about the EWA. They were they are one of the newer uh, alliances, war alliances out there. <clears throat> um, but they're growing really fast, uh, having a lot of good success, have some very strong clans in there. And uh, just wanted to get your perspective on what, what kind of the history of the EWA and how you and I believe uh, it was Jay Blah kind of uh, came together and decided to, to get this thing going and what your vision was for it. And uh, yeah, just tell me a little bit about it. All right, so basically, man, the EWA was created by a group of people, so me and Jay Blah being two of them, and we were hosting or participating in a fair play tournament called the Valentine's Day Massacre. So this was back in February. I don't know if you remember that mm -hmm. or are aware of it. And um, basically, like, we saw each other's home clans and knew knew each other and saw how, like, how each other's clans are elite and uh, could be... Um, network together to make a stronger and make a better uh, war community, right? Mm -hmm. So we got together one day and I approached Jay Blah with the idea of, um, you know, uniting and kind of making the uh, fair play war community as strong as possible by creating this new alliance called the Elite War Alliance. And uh, it kind of took off from there. So it was, it was born in late February. Um, and uh, we are the, I would say, to this point, we have been the fastest growing uh, community or alliance in the game. And how we did this is that we scanned over global chats, which we don't really do anymore because, you know, global's kind of, well, that's as mm -hmm. much as I'll say about it. But uh, we went over Twitter. We uh, had connections over Twitter. We went through fair play chat rooms, reaching out to top fair play clans. And uh, basically went through uh, top YouTubers as well and uh, got our name out there. So... The first six clans who we consider the founding members of the EWA um, basically saw the same image as us and decided to join it because they, they saw how uh, this thing, this idea could take off and become one of the top fair play alliances in the game. So these six clans were Dust Dominion, Annihilate, Club MA, SYG, Above and Beyond, and Six Schlitzes. So... Uh, Three of the oh no four of those clans are still in the EWA today and are some of our strongest members. Um, <clears throat> I know the 2.0 family has lost actually both to Six Schlitzes and um, one of those other clans you had mentioned. I know I know we took a loss to so yeah. they they're they're no joke right. There's some really good clans in here, and like you said, not even six months in, and yeah. I mean how many total clans do you have now? We're at 24 uh, right now, actually. Uh, we've lost a few along the way because uh, they've taken turns where they, where they uh, don't feel like the EWA is uh, uh, um, giving them like the positive vibe it was at first, as well as um, they weren't really helping us in any way either. So it was trying to just the change of heart. But uh, we've also gained a lot of top fair play clans through the process, and we've uh, I'd say that we're still growing, and we're at a better point than we've ever been before. Awesome. Yeah. Um, especially in such a short amount of time, too. I mean, you give this thing another six months, right? And and where does yeah. it go? Yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> um, so what kind of, if you're a clan, you know, I, that's looking looking to be part of an alliance, uh, what kind of process do you have to go through to be part of the EWA? And then what does the EWA offer to you as a clan that, that would entice you to, to be part yeah. of it? Sure. So basically, we are looking for like the best of the best clans. Like we're not we're not looking for no average Joes. If you are, there's other networks out there that are that'd be willing to take you in. But this is elite war alliance, like its name implies, right? So we mm -hmm. so we're looking for those elite war clans, man. Like that's that's what we do, and that's what we will continue to do. And we we are also looking for clans that will never stop uh, improving. Are always looking for arranged wars, or are already in that scene. 
Yep. Um, we're not looking to really help people get into that scene like we might have been at the beginning. We're expecting our clans to be now. Um, we're looking for members that are in the uh, in the know about the latest strats and techniques. Like, uh, like I know that some strats are big out there right now, like bowler bowlers and um, HGH miners. bowler, yeah, overpowered, yeah, that in, <laughs> in, that in uh, Town Hall Nine, and then just like mass bowlers in Town Hall Eleven if executed properly, stuff like that, you know. Yeah, and then um, we are also looking for members. Like they they should be in the know about clash related things, but also. We're looking for good people to have a good time with, right? That's like without having a good time in Clash, what are we doing playing the game, right? Absolutely. So, so I mean, like we're looking to have a good time. A very, weather. very subtle point that I think a lot of people miss these days. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> have whether, some fun with the game. Yeah, whether that's in like EWA chats and events, or just like communication between both the clan or two of our clans, it, it's like if you're not having a fun then get off the game i mean yep but and um yeah i was gonna say you know and a, a thing i'm sure you look at too is just drama free right i mean oh yeah that, that's such a big piece i mean mm -hmm. being being leaders of top clans and stuff you go through that stuff just way too often and yeah. i mean it, it's something something that is gonna happen it's inevitable when you get a mass group of people from all around the world in the same chat rooms in the same game things are going to happen but obviously you know there's certain groups that cause it more than others right so mm -hmm. that's something you want to stay away from as well so what kind of so say say you you think your clan fits that criteria and you you know you are looking for arranged wars you know all your clans practicing the th good three star um, current three star strats what would be the next step to to okay. get into the ewa so in order to join us um the EWA is always looking for new applicants, right? Like, like we're never going to stop growing and never going to stop looking to improve. Um, so basically, all clans are interested in joining the Elite War Alliance. Uh, there's an application that actually can be found on our old website, which is ewaclash.com. But we're actually working on a new website because uh, that's uh, set to be launched on July 1st, made by a professional that we're paying, um, that the nice. EW is paying. Um, and basically did this because the old uh, website maker retired. Oh, but, gotcha. But it, our application is still updated and still can be found on that old website, so ewaclash.com. Um, and basically, <coughs> so they'll fill that out. Then EWA administration, so basically the moderators of the EWA, will go over the application and look at the responses that the person put in for the questions that we're going to ask. And see if it would be a smart decision to issue a clan an evaluation. So take them to the evaluation process. And uh, reasons why we maybe wouldn't issue a clan an evaluation is like one of the main factors of um, of the elite war alliance is the arranged war aspect. And so if a clan's like in their description, they have town hall five plus, you're not going to really be able to arrange or no. with the rest of the ewa clans so that wouldn't really work too well and also if a clan is openly modding and we're a fair play community it yeah really uh, that work. that was a pretty obvious one i yeah. mean as yeah. much as people like to think modding still does exist it is mm -hmm. a lot trickier to do and makes you even more of a loser now <laughs> if you actually have the time to put in to, to still make it happen. But it, it does, and it's pretty sad, but um, obviously that's not something, you know, a fair play alliance is going to tolerate. Um, and definitely there's no point in your clan, even though, you know, you might be a little lower weight, you, ha you have to have a certain weight range that is comparable to the rest of the clans in the EWA, or there's just no point, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then also, okay, so to follow up on this, if a clan is issued an evaluation, a member of EWA administration team will actually go over to evaluate the clan. I'd like to make this point clear. We're not evaluating the clan based on, like, if they're good or not or if they, like, are meeting EWA standards. They're basically the evaluation is to see whether the EWA is a good option for the clan or and if the clan would benefit and be a good option for the EWA. So we're not evaluating you and saying, oh yeah, you're a good clan or you're terrible, right? Yeah. We're, we're seeing if they would be a good fit and whether we would benefit each other in the long run. Yeah, that makes sense because it's got to be some sort of mutual yeah. you know, uh, benefit for both both sides. Um, yeah, exactly. 
yeah so that's that's really cool um and then once he goes over he just hangs out for a day or whatever and and checks things out and makes that decision we might look into like actually uh, even enhancing this evaluation process and getting into a war with that clan to see how they run things yeah but but yeah basically we just go over look at some war attacks look at war bases talk to some of the members in the clan talk to leadership see how they run things those are just a few of the basic things that we go over Okay. Um, now, one little thing, I, I, I don't want to dwell too much on modding, but um, just so I'm clear, the EWA is not okay with a, a lot of clans. There's a big talk always about uh, X modders. Um, what's your guys' stance on that? Okay. So we actually have a position in the EWA called the EWA reps, and each EWA clan has to nominate two reps, which is usually from their leadership core, to kind of represent their clan in front of other clans in the EWA. Yep. And uh, so we put a vote out because we felt because we had been issued and uh, there had been issues in the past about us not having a stance on X modders. Mm-hmm. And um, so we put a vote out in the EWA reps chat to see like what should it be, what should our stance be? Because obviously we needed a stance. And uh, we decided that we will not be accepting X modders into our clan at this time. I mean, like, we're not going to go, this isn't a witch hunt, right? So we're not going to go into every EWA clan and say, oh, this person must be an ex-modder, like, get them out of here. No, but it's a general statement. Yeah, but it's a, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's yeah. a general stance that the EWA has. We're not we're not saying ex-modders are bad people. We're not saying anything like that. But the fact that we still have to call them ex-modders is still, like, if they were all, <coughs> if, if they were... Oh, how should I stand? How should I state this? If they well, were like, yeah, maybe. Uh, what I was gonna say is th- this is how 2.0 did it. This is we we had a discussion obviously in our leadership. Same idea, right? We had to take a stance as a clan family on mm-hmm. what what we we're gonna do when all this came out. And the way we look at it is this. Modding still can exist, first mm-hmm. of all, um, whether it's a burner account or whether you just copy a base manually and sort of guess traps. It's still possible to, to mm-hmm. I mean, again, it's not as effective and it's a lot more difficult. However, there's not it's not stopping anyone from sort of, you know, looking at a base on battle day, plugging it into their modding program offline. And practicing it all day long based on where they guess where the traps are. And then, yeah, they can't do the one touch and in game, but you've still practiced the base 20 times. Before, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still possible to an extent. And we don't know. For us guys that don't mod, we don't fully know exactly what is possible and what isn't. And I think the unknown is just too much. And then, not to mention, what happens if a couple months down the road, all of a sudden they're like, oh, X mod figured out how to crack the detection from supercell you're <laughs> yeah, you're that telling the, that's you're the t- largest that that point right there is the largest fact that i think made us decide our stance on no x modders at this time because then you're screwed uh, that, you're yeah, screwed because you have all these guys they won't go back to it right because yeah and then do it once i mean the worst part about modding i i felt back in the day was the unknown the suspicions of your own clan mates sometimes because you just don't know and mm-hmm. um yeah, it's just there's there's just too many uncertainties at this point. Um, I think we need to go a little bit of time before we even consider that that kind of thing. At least the 2.0 family. So I totally understand the decision. In fact, the 2.0 uh, 2.0 family pulled out of the DWA because of their opposite stance on that. And no big deal. Again, it is what it is, and and groups of people are going to come to the decisions that they they want. And <laughs> other groups of people just aren't going to be part of it. So. Um, like you said, no, no, uh, no hard feelings towards anyone. It's not, mm. you know, no, it's nothing personal, but you, you have to take a stance as a group one way or the other. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So, yeah. And, and this isn't something that might like, will be a forever thing for the EWA or anything like that, but it's, it's our stance right now, as of right now. And it, and uh, until we decide to change it, it will continue to be our stance. Yeah, I agree fully. And, and six months from now, yeah. when things are looking like they are right now. I'm sure things will be re- reevaluated, but it's just too mm-hmm. soon and it's just too unknown. I think that's kind of the best way to to sum it up. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so that's awesome. Um, you said you had about you, there's 24 clans in, yeah. in the EWA, so yeah. that's a big number already. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you're getting a little uh, choosy on on who you who you're bringing yeah, in, but yeah, we're certainly um, kicking up the standards a little bit. As we, I mean, our clans are all really good with top war clans and everything 
and yep. they are the best of the best but our, our standards are definitely kicking up as we don't want to like grow just to grow in numbers we really want to keep that quality over quantity and uh don't want to just add clans for the purpose of adding clans yeah absolutely and especially now that you're at the point you got a good base and mm -hmm. things are going great things are organized and flowing right it's it's now time to to really start start strengthening the team as opposed to just making you know not just strength and numbers but strength and quality like you said yeah <clears throat> um so anything you, go ahead oh, Sorry? okay i was just gonna say do you mind if i just say the names of the 24 clans yeah go ahead listen okay off. so we have bloodline brcm broken empire desolation divergence heroic giants icon tj morning sword one hive invicta hopefully one point or one hive 2.0 soon <laughs> ottawa predominance shadow militia um shadow ravens temple rising the dark knights the moochers T uh, TWSS, Violent Wizards, and War Agency. Yeah, be a lot of good names in there, man. Uh, like yeah. I said, I know we. Uh, t it was Dark Looters that was the other one we we took a loss to uh, with 2.0. Um, oh, yeah. they, that's a good group of guys over there for sure. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I mean, guys, check it out if you think your clan is at a point where they're looking for a group to be part of because you know you want your arranged wars to be a little easier to arrange perhaps um and you think you might be a good fit uh how would they uh they would just go on the old website like you said is it's ewaclash.com yeah. yeah or if they already know me and are in contact with me on other um other things or in contact with anyone from the ewa clan they can get the application through there as well and i can send it to them or whatever it's needed okay but, beautiful but yeah it can be found on the old website Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then you're such a busy guy. I don't know how you do all this. I mean, I can barely <laughs> handle my responsibilities. But another little thing you've been working on uh, that I wanted to mention was that I'm also part of is the FPC Canada division. Yes. So we've been seeing a lot of these FPC clans from um, kind of different parts of the states. And I'm not 100% on all of the all of the clans that exist but from certain parts of the world all groups of people from that nationality are getting together doing range wars um what was your total same kind of thing what was your goal with the fpc canada because it seemed like it gained some steam really quickly a lot of cool canadians in there yeah i don't know man i've been wanting to do this for a while now i've seen clans like fpc india and fpc germany kind of uh just get together with their own with their own uh people of their own nationality and uh just war together and have some fun you know and kind of kick some ass so i figured why not why not get some canadians together and do the same thing i mean the fpc regional thing had already started and i and i was like all right it's time to start fpc canada and i knew it would be a big thing because i already knew a lot of top fair play clashers from canada in the game yep so um not so yeah, it kind of just started, and it just hasn't stopped growing ever since. We got our first arranged <clears throat> coming up on July 12th. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, um, it should be fun. Um, what I thought was the coolest thing was just being in chat with, with all these guys from all the different clans. You start to start to realize what a small world it is. You know, you, oh, you match up with oh, these yeah. match up with these guys that you had no idea who they were to begin with, and you're like, oh, you live like an hour away from me kind of thing right and um <laughs> you know canada's a big place obviously but you know i'm, I'm talking to some uh, some guys from where i grew up um you know i lived in quite a few different parts of canada myself and i don't know it's just kind of neat uh getting in a getting in, in a position with with a lot of guys that really could be your neighbor <laughs> you don't even yeah. know what yeah. <clears throat> um yeah. So yeah, that that's gonna keep keep growing, and I think uh, it, that to me seems like such a difficult thing to manage because it's I don't want to call it a temporary clan, but you know what I'm getting at? Like a yeah. lot of people that are gonna be part of that aren't necessarily gonna be there full time. Mm -hmm. So how do you plan to keep that going and manage it with uh, you know guys kind of going in and out constantly and stuff well, like that? Well, we got us right away when we add anyone. Actually, our recruitment's actually. Uh, getting a little tough right now that uh, we're getting so many numbers so we can really only pull the weights and uh the people that we really need right yep so uh we got our own little recruitment team within fbc canada which both of us are a part of yep but um so we're gonna try to manage that and only take in the people that we need but right now actually in fbc canada we've actually been um 
uh, keeping up uh, and with the wars, the little 15v15s and 10v10s with our minis to just level up the clan. And uh, But we don't have those minis on our spreadsheet. So uh, when arranged war is coming around and we need to make room in the clans, I'll just look at who's in the war or whoever's arranging the war. We'll just look at who's involved in the arranged war and uh, take it from there and really just take out the minis for that. And then we'll restart after the arranged war is over and keep leveling up the clan, keep creating the FVC Canada dynasty. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, it, that's so important, right? You got to keep leveling yeah. up the clan. Just the, yeah. the low level, level one clan is so yeah. dismal, <laughs> but um, it's, it's going quick. I, I, what level are, is it, is it two already? Yeah, it's two already. And yeah. It's, started Only last week a point. week yeah exactly um got a few perfect wars under our belt going well yeah right on um so yeah looking forward to some arranged range stuff hopefully we can you know match up with some of the other fpc clans because it's just gonna be a, a cool thing just to represent your nation um mm-hmm. and going up against other nations right it's like the world's the way you look at it so yeah. um Really excited to see uh, see what's on the horizon for FPC Canada. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, should be a good one. Uh, I'm excited to see where we can go with it as well. Um, yeah, beautiful. Uh, anything else that you might want to add that we uh, we didn't talk about? Um, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, FPC Canada's got a Twitter going, so if you want to join FPC Canada, maybe send them a DM on uh twitter and uh see or a personal message on twitter i should say and uh ask them uh if you can join and we'll get you sorted out and we'll see do you know what it is off the top or is it just at fpc canada i i believe so um i can i think it's at fpc canada it might be at fpc underscore canada but i okay. wouldn't take my word for it Honestly, I'm sure if you just search that, it will come yeah. up. So. And then if not, if, if you don't have Twitter or whatever, and you know someone that's uh, affiliated with FPC Canada, just um, maybe send them a message, and uh, they can try to get you sorted out. So, yeah, man, I mean, we're looking to we're looking to unite some Canadians over here and uh, get us all worn together to, to win some wars. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, um... Okay, that sounds good. I think uh, we may as well wrap this one up, though. Uh, yeah, pre- sure. Appreciate you coming out. I'm sure uh, a lot of people are going to be interested in hearing this information. So I'm um, glad we could finally get this video done. Sorry for uh, the delay <laughs> on it. No, it's me too, man. But uh, we did get, yeah, we have very opposite schedules. I'm a, I'm a weekend <laughs> worker. That's basically mm-hmm. your only time to yourself. So glad we could finally pound this out and uh, and get it done. So um yeah again like i said thanks for coming out uh, i think that'll yeah. do it here for your wisdom yeah. from wiser just trying to help you guys bag that next tree star till then we're out <laughs>